Back now with Dr. Sutton here at the table. Great to see you as always. Happy to be here. Let's dig into this major medical breakthrough. Yes. We were just talking about it, yes. and, and it really deals with sickle cell. Yes. Uh, so what, what did we learn? Because the, the way they were able to do this is also pretty remarkable, too. Pretty remarkable. Over the weekend, two therapeutic interventions were approved that can serve as a functional cure for sickle cell disease, and they both use something called gene editing, one of them using a brand new technology called CRISPR gene editing. Essentially, the way to think about it is it's a long process, but these patients, essentially, their sickle cells that, or their stem cells that create sickle cells are taken from them. They are then given a round of chemotherapy. Those cells that create sickle cells are edited to create non-sickled cells, then are given back to the patient, which then hopefully produce normal or non-sickled cells that can serve as a functional cure, eliminating the complications. Wow, wow. I know you had a question okay, about it. Okay, so yes. this is such a major breakthrough, but I think in order for us to understand the importance of it, we need to really understand why sickle cell is such an impactful thing for people to have. And absolutely. for people, people that aren't important. so familiar with it, can you explain the symptoms? It is, absolutely, it is the most commonly inherited blood disorder. It affects more than 20 million people worldwide, more than 100,000 Americans, well, within the United States, predominantly whom are black or have African ancestry. And many people think about sickle cell as the association to a pain crisis, which yes, as an ER doctor, that's probably the most likely form that I see. But the other complications as we were discussing include infection, stroke, heart attack, and the average lifespan of someone living with sickle cell disease in this country is around 52 years old oh, wow. That's because it. of those complications. Yeah. And so this therapeutic intervention wow. has an opportunity not just to improve quality of life, but extend life. It could Save be life. a game changer. So my cousin, wow. she grew up with sickle cell. She's 44 yes. years old. She's had strokes, yeah. plural. Uh, she's been through quite the journey. So when I saw this breakthrough, I was like, great, this could be a home run for her and could be a game changer for her life and quality of life. But when I saw the price tag. Can it's you talk about that? Incredibly expensive. That's one of the uh, di difficult parts. So whenever we have a new pharmaceutical or a new therapeutic intervention, the first question we're asking is, is this attainable? Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is this, this is so expensive. Uh, but when you look at the comparative cost of someone who uses hospitals and has common emergency visits throughout mm -hmm. their lifetime, that can add up to more than yes. millions of dollars. Yes. And so, yes, we don't know the official price of this. It likely will be extremely expensive. When I spoke to the lead investigator, they would hope that third-party investors would participate, which would make it more attainable. Mm -hmm. But right now, that's still a difficult part. Uh, and, and it's not just this pharmaceutical intervention. It's all new interventions that come out. Mm -hmm. And this process is, it's lengthy and it's difficult, right? But you're saying that people, it's worth it. It is. It is lengthy and difficult. It requires months of preparation. Like likely a hospital stay, even a round of chemotherapy to rid the malfunctioning cells. Mm. But for the patients who have done this treatment, granted these patients have had severe forms of sickle yeah. cell disease, they both have had a chance to interview them and they both responded by saying they would do it all over again. Right, a 13 year old and a 33 year old. 13 year old right? and a 33 year what old. What perspective you got. Mm. It was an incredible perspective, mainly also because when I spoke to that 13 year old who was cured of this years ago, he would remark on things that he wanted to do now. He's given freedom to have fun at school, mm. go on play dates. Oh go on trips and to jump into a pool of cold water without fearing a pain right. crisis. I right. thought that that was really remarkable. Oh, I just get chills. I mean, thank you for for telling us about no, it. No, I mean, absolutely. Just, I, I, I think really we need, hope. Yeah. Hope. It's and hope I hope. is it, right? It's hope. <laughs> it provides Positive hope. Positive sign for the future. Absolutely. And I hope that one day, uh, as the lead investigator also believes, that we will be able to provide this to not just those with the severest form of the illness, mm -hmm. but also those who are dealing with the mild or moderate forms. Yeah. Again, so that we can think about sickle cell as a thing of the past rather than trying to operate in the present day. Mm -hmm.